Amen. Thank you, Holly. We do indeed want to crown Jesus Christ Lord of all as we gather together here once more at Richville United Church of Christ. We welcome all of our sisters, brothers, members, guests, and friends, both those who are joining here in person, socially distancing, using all of our safety protocols, as well as you who are joining us online. For those who couldn't be here in person, I do encourage you to go to richvilleucc.com and you can download today's worship folder, our messenger uh, calendar bulletin update, uh, as well as an activity packet for the kiddos based on today's scriptures. Friends, today is the final Sunday of the post-Christmas, the Epiphany season. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, and we'll talk more about that in a variety of ways throughout service. We also have kind of a double-stuffed Oreo set of occasions that we want to acknowledge, even if only briefly. In addition to being the liturgical celebration of the Transfiguration of our Lord and Savior, Today is also Racial Reconciliation Sunday. Today is a day in the church when we recall God's love and desire for justice for all people, hoping that there would be equality and that people who have either injured or been injured might find peace with one another through God's redeeming power, truth, and love. Today is also Science and Technology Sunday. Uh, this is particular to a couple of denominations, including the United Church of Christ. But it's the one Sunday a year when we take a moment to thank God for the gift of, for instance, medical miracles. The Lord has given us intelligence, creativity, and the ability to interact with the natural world with reason and with power. And that indeed does come from the Lord. Uh, so we want to thank God for everything from the ability to communicate across video technology, uh, as well as things like vaccines, Science and Technology Sunday. And additionally, as most folks know, today is both the sacred and the secular holiday of St. Valentine's Day. Uh, beyond the cards and candies that are customary for this occasion, I would encourage people to look into the history of St. Valentine. Uh, there are two, if not three, historical figures that the church has traditionally lifted up in honor of the historical person of St. Valentine. In each instance, regardless of the variations, this was a martyr of the faith who practiced self-sacrificial love in the way of Jesus. And so we really want to honor St. Valentine today, even as we give God thanks for our loved ones, whether they're rom romantic, platonic, or familial. Hey, uh, I want to ask you guys, in a year such as this, when we're practicing social distancing, when everybody's scaled back, um, how do we celebrate today's holiday in, in, in such a small way? With a Valentine. All right, uh, before we get ready for worship in earnest, um, I do want to remind people that Wednesday kicks off the next season in the church calendar. That's the Lenten season. And this year, our theme is Out of This World. And we are using Henry Nowen's Steadfast Love as our congregational devotional. Uh, those are available in the back of the sanctuary in the narthex for you to pick up. Uh, and also you can swim past the church during regular office or programming hours. If you aren't able to get here on your own, please call, text, email, instant message me, and I will make a special delivery. Uh, and we'll do that according to whatever your desires are. Pick up your Lenten devotional, Ash Wednesday kicks off Lent this week, and uh, we are having service at 7 o'clock on Ash Wednesday. We will be practicing all of our safety protocols, and I've developed uh, a safe way to do the imposition of ashes as well. As we continue to look at the calendar, which again you can download for yourself off of the website, this afternoon at 2 p.m., our Sunday school age COGS kids are going to be having an ice skating party at the Hall of Fame City Ice Skating Rink downtown Canton. That's $2 if you have your own skates, $4 if you need to rent. 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, the Sunday school age kids are having an ice skating party. If you have not yet signed up, you can contact either Elizabeth Whitaker uh, or our Director of Youth and Family Ministries, Gary Bickle. Tomorrow is our newsletter deadline for March. Um, this coming Tuesday, the Finance and Stewardship meeting has been canceled. I already acknowledged Wednesday, we will have service at 7 p.m., which also means there will be no Bible study this week, but we will be streaming the service as well. 
The Stop Weight Loss group has canceled for the month of February, and uh, Thursday evening Spiritual Life has canceled as well. Next Sunday is our monthly youth service Sunday and uh, Joyful Noise Noisy offering, second mile giving. So remember to uh, collect and share your spare change. Um, that's a ministry that goes above and beyond our regular program budget. It either goes to Habitat for Humanity or Capital Improvements on alternating months. Next Sunday night at 6 p.m. is our Senior High Rise meeting. Contact Gary Bickle for details on that. Finally, friends, if you have not as yet, you can swing past the church and get a copy of the 2020 annual report, as well as our quarterly budget, proposed budget, uh, as we navigate being distance from one another, but still remain faithful stewards of the congregation. Loved ones, we are a people who are transformed by the power of Christ in us, the image of God within all of us shining through. We are people who are reconciled to our God and called to be reconciled to one another. We are a people who have been given miraculous intellects and power to understand and engage the creation that God has blessed us with. We are a people full of self-sacrificial love on behalf of the one whose name we now sing with our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. We come to you seeking fellowship with other believers in the kind of divine intimacy that Peter, James, and John enjoyed. And we pray that any mountaintop experiences we might have would fill us with fuller knowledge of God's plans throughout history. Forgive us then, we humbly ask, when we do not see you for who you really are. Help us to encounter your brilliance and purity. May we receive new understanding of how the Holy One works through the law and prophets before we came to earth. Grant us mercy too, we pray, any time our mouths get ahead of our brains or spirits. Remove the rash foolishness that fear can produce in us. Keep us from trying to put you in a box. Then the power of the perfect parent's presence will surround and embrace us. Then we will be even more convinced that you are the beloved Son of the Most High, and we will listen to you with renewed passion. In turn, we will realize that our faith is about following you and not just calling upon your name. And then, when we proclaim your resurrection, your power over death itself, our testimonies will have that much more power. Amen.
turn to the center of all Reformed Protestant worship, which of course is the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elijah said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elijah, Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, replied Elisha. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to them, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And she replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. To the Jordan. And she replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over it on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what can I do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Elisha replied, You have asked a difficult thing. Elijah said, Yes, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went to, up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. Thank you, Trinity. That's God's word to and for the people of God, according to the second book of the kings of Israel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And we read that today on this Transfiguration Sunday because Elijah was one of two people in the scriptures who was actually bodily assumed into heaven. Uh, the First one being Elijah, and then secondly, Jesus at the end of his resurrection life. Uh, and we know that Jesus, in some respects, was the reincarnation of the prophet Elijah, the fulfillment of all those who had come before him. And we honor the way that Christ was honored and Elijah was honored before him when God let all light and power show through them. Uh, as we seek more of God's light and power for our own lives, we first want to take a few moments and share God's love and truth with our youngest friends. Today, uh, we have the Children's Church immediately following the children's message, and we're grateful for Elizabeth Whitaker teaching today. Um, as we get started, I want to say to the kids, and today I'm going to use my children, uh, since we don't have to worry about uh, cross-contamination, I'm going to use them as an object example. So, uh, Charles and Trudy, if you guys want to come up to the chancel steps, that would appreciate that. Come on, hop along. All right. So, as always, we want to get started by saying, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am a child of the Most High God, wonderfully and fearfully made. Fantastic. Every day is a gift from God. We have a beautiful, sunshiny day. It might be cold. We might be expecting some snow showers later. But right now, we give God thanks that we got to wake up and breathe and be together here in worship. 
And every one of us is a gift from God. Every person has been imbued, has been born with the spark of God inside of them. That makes them beautiful and worthwhile, doesn't it? But we're all different, aren't we? Some of us have strengths where other people have weaknesses, right? Some of us enjoy certain activities and don't enjoy others. Does that make people good or bad just because they're different? No, no, it doesn't. Um, some people are, are more athletic than others, aren't they? Hey, uh, as we're talking about all of that, let me ask everybody, how many of us like to win? You like to win? Uh, I suppose. Yeah, well, uh, I actually am the type of person that constitutionally, I like to win so much that years ago, I stopped playing video games. I barely play board games with my own children because I just have that competitive need to win streak in me. And I don't like who I sometimes turn into. But we all like to win, don't we? So right now, brother and sister, even though one of you might be faster sometimes, at the moment, who's going to be faster? Sissy's going to be faster because of your busted leg, right? Well, here's the thing. In today's Bible reading from the Old Testament that Trinity read for us, we have two prophets. One was the teacher, one was the student. Elijah was the teacher, Elisha was the student. And they were kind of running a race, right? They were running the race of telling God's story to other people. But Elijah was coming to the end of his life when God took him up to heaven in that flaming chariot that we read about, right? Well, Charles, let's say we were going to run a race around the church, okay? How much of that race do you think you could run right now? Half, maybe? Okay, can you see the finish line at the moment? But if Dad says there's a finish line, you're going to trust that, right? Well, that was the story of the prophet Elijah. He knew that he and his student were supposed to run the race of telling God's people about how to come back to God. That was their finish line. But Elijah wasn't going to be able to finish the race. So you know what Elijah did? All right, you know what a relay race is? Elijah passed the baton to Elisha, right? So two different people, two different ages, two different sets of skills and interests, but they had the same goal in common. Now, was Elijah going to be able to do everything that God wanted done in Israel at that time? So what did Elijah do? Pass the baton, pass the mantle to Elisha, who kept running the race. So today, we want to remember that whether we're talking about the next scientific invention, whether we're talking about making sure that all of God's people have equality and justice in their lives, we want to talk about whether or not we're, we're bringing forth more of God's light from our own lives, or passing on the self-sacrificial love of Jesus. We don't have to do it by ourselves, do we? We have a team, and when we are willing to pass the baton, we all win in the end. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pray, and then Mr. Tom is going to walk you guys down to Sunday school with Miss Elizabeth. Let's talk to the Lord. Holy God, we thank you on this day that one generation's work doesn't necessarily have to be completed so long as we pass it on to the next generation. Whatever is broken, we know you continue to repair through future people. Lord, we know that you have given each one of us a unique ability to speak your love and truth into the world. And we get to do that together. So may we celebrate that today as we ask these kids and their friends and their teachers to continue to pass the mantle on to others that your light, your love, and your truth would continue to be proclaimed throughout the entirety of creation. We thank, ask, and pray all of these things through the name of your precious Son, our brother, your holy child, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And may all God's kids say, Amen. Amen. All right, guys. As I said, you can head down to Sunday school with Miss Elizabeth, and Mr. Tom's going to walk you down to your classroom. As the children...
move toward their time of continuing spiritual formation and Christian education. We want to ready ourselves for our ongoing conversation, the continuation of what we've been talking about already today. But before we do so, as always, of course, I need your help in asking the Holy Spirit's blessing upon our conversation. Let's pray. Giver of every good gift, author and perfecter of our lives and faith, redeemer of our sin and error, we come to you this morning and we do realize that you have lifted high the living word, Jesus the Christ, that through him all perfect illumination came to earth in the flesh, so much so that even his earthly disciples got a glimpse of it. May we have a glimpse of the fullness of your power, of your perfection, of your purity this morning. May the same Spirit that lit up Jesus light us up today and fall upon our reading and discussion of our sacred texts. Finally, Lord, I would ask that the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of each of our hearts and minds might be acceptable in your sight. For this we do pray through our rock and redeemer, Jesus the and may all God's people say, Amen. 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 There once was an older gentleman on his deathbed, and his family had been fortunate enough to gather around him in those final moments. He was too weak at that point to really lift his head or even open his eyes, but he could talk to his family. Rachel, Rachel, my beloved wife, are you here? My wife of 70 years? The love of my life, my soulmate, the woman God created me to be with, are you here? And Rachel grabbed her spouse's hand, warmly patted it, and said, yes, my wonderful husband, I'm here just like I swore I would be all those years ago at our wedding. I'm here. The gentleman smiled, then said, David, David, my eldest son, my firstborn, are you here? Yes, Father, I'm right here by your side. And he gave his father a peck on the forehead. And the gentleman smiled again. Then he said, Elijah, my brilliant son, my pride and joy, are you here? Yes, father, I got the first plane from New York as soon as I could, and I'm here. And the father reached out and rubbed his other child's shoulder. Finally, the gentleman spoke again and said, Sarah, my beautiful daughter, my heroic youngest, you who joined the military and fought for our freedoms, the light of my life, my little angel, are you here? And she replied, yes, daddy, I'm here. We're all here, right by your side. And the father then said, so who's watching the store? Our lives are not just about verbiage. They're not just about warm fuzzies. They're not just about those ridiculous chalk tasting heart candies with the messages printed on them. It's about how we live and passing on the legacies of our family, our faith, our freedoms into the future. It's a question of seeing and doing. Too often in our world, our religious inclination is to see that God is good, that Jesus is holy. Maybe to give it lip service and proclaim it, but how does it transfigure, transform our lives? The deep and abiding Christian faith that we celebrate in a variety of ways today and we see expressed in our scriptures is an active faith, doing after we have seen who Jesus really is. To illustrate that and in honor of Science and Technology Sunday, I want to share this anecdote about two sociologists who were sitting by the pool. One turned to the other and asked, have you read Marx? The second one replied, yes, those darn wicker chairs. Read Marx. 
Sometimes we're blind or deaf to the real questions at hand. As were Elijah and Elisha in some respects. In the passage that Trinity read for us, both the elder prophet and the younger student had some growing up to do. They had to see the real question at hand so that they could do what God was asking of them. Elijah, like most parents, had to grow up into the knowledge that he could not save his students, his son, from the troubles of this world. Rather, he had to equip him to face and overcome those battles. Elisha had to grow up and know that he could not forever hold on to his father figure and mentor. You notice there is this repetition of each town that they go to, and Elisha is desperately clinging to the coattails of his teacher. And other prophets come and say, hey man, I'm sorry, but you know, the Lord's going to take him. I know, but don't talk to me about it. Essentially, na 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 I can't hear you. He knew what was coming. He had seen it, but what was he doing about it? And Elijah, once again, like any good parent, wanted to save Elisha from the hurts and the heartache of seeing his leader taken from him. But they both had to grow up, not only see reality for what it was, but act accordingly. There once was a man who walked up to a librarian and asked, do you have any books on Pavlov's dogs and Schrodinger's cat? The librarian responded, I'm afraid you'll have to look for it for yourself. It rings a bell, but I'm not sure if it's there or not. Pavlov, Schrodinger's cat. Nevertheless, the issue is, once we hear the good news of Jesus, once we have seen the Lord esteemed and glorified and transfigured, then, like his own disciples, we have to come down off the mountain, get back out into the world, and do something about what we have seen and heard. We must not only practice the faith ourselves, but pass on the mantle, which Elijah quite literally did for Elisha. There was a fourth grader celebrating his birthday, and like my sixth grade son, he was doing it on crutches. So he couldn't carry the cupcakes into school that his mom had baked for his classmates. When he arrived, he was having some difficulty, and one of the teachers told his other brother to help him carry them in. And the sibling said, ah, I, I, I could, but I prefer not to. Now, this was a Christian school, and so spotting a teaching moment, the educator said, well, what would Jesus do? And the other sibling said, Jesus would heal him so he could carry his own cupcakes. <laughs> do I believe that Jesus heals based upon merit? No. As we constantly remind ourselves in our family of faith, in our exploration of the scriptures, God's Restoring power is a free gift. However, are we expected, once we've experienced forgiveness and healing, to then do something about it and share it with others? Absolutely. Notice that at the moment of the transfiguration, when Jesus and the disciples are at the top of the mountain, that place which represents closeness to God, that place which represents when God handed the Hebrew people rules for living, or the covenants, the Ten Commandments, the Torah, that place which represented interaction between the divine one and earthly prophets. On the Mount of the Transfiguration, after Jesus was illuminated and his students saw it, notice that what did they want to do? They wanted to stop and build tabernacles for Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. They wanted to box the Lord in and keep that moment hermetically sealed. 
But immediately after that suggestion is offered by the disciples, the voice of God from heaven says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. God didn't say, make a pretty banner, wave a flag. God didn't say, erect a synagogue here. God said, this is my son, listen to him. The teachings of our Lord and Savior, our brother and rabbi, Jesus, were referred to as the way, meaning it was a way to be walked, a doing, and not just a seeing, speaking about, or merely believing. As the Christian and poet W.H. Auden wrote, Christ did not enchant men. He demanded that they believe in him except on one occasion, the transfiguration. For a brief while, Peter, James, and John were permitted to see the Lord in his glory. And in that brief moment, they had no need of faith. But the minute the vision vanished, and the memory of it did not prevent them from forsaking Christ when he was arrested, or Peter from denying that he ever knew him, the moment that the vision vanished, they were called to believe and to act, to do and not just see. In fact, there are two types of people in this world. Those who can extrapolate from incomplete data sets. The God of this age has blinded people. Today's reading from 2 Corinthians tells us. Those who can extrapolate from incomplete data sets. The God of this age has blinded people, we are told in today's 2 Corinthians reading. What does that mean? As we started this message time with, sometimes we're not asking the right questions. We're not hearing the right counsel. We're not seeing reality for what it is. But the good news that Paul writes about in 2 Corinthians is that our eyes have been unveiled. When we see the fullness of the glory of the purposes of Jesus the Christ, we are then empowered to go and face the whirlwind, as Elisha had to. Did you notice that? As his mentor was assumed into heaven, he had to look at the devastation he was personally experiencing in order to move beyond it and carry the prophetic message into the next generation. That double outpouring of the Lord's Spirit was only granted to him if he would face facts and acknowledge them for what they truly are, and then to do something about it. There is so much substance and content in each of today's three readings that we only are glancing at the surface. But for now, based upon our text, I want to offer this. As much as we all need those moments of uplift, we are called to come down off the mountain. As much as we want to win and we want to protect and preserve future generations, we have to pass the baton on. Consider how each great moment in human history has never been fully realized. During the month of February, in this nation, we celebrate Black History Month. Do you think that Dr. King's dream has been realized yet? We continue to pass the baton like Elijah did to Elisha. Come down off the mountain. Share the mantle with the next generation. Forget head knowledge and lip service. Show and tell others what God has done in your life, who Christ appears to be to you. Think about it as a child in preschool. Show and tell. We don't just see, we do, and we pass it on. 2 Corinthians refers to believers as servants who make themselves such to others. Servants who preach Christ glorified, magnified, transfigured. Preach Christ and not 
themselves. So we have to put some skin in the game and do something about what we've seen. The Lord is so good and gracious that not only are we transformed, but we are transforming through the same power, the same authority, the same spirit that let those disciples know that Jesus was the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets and much, much more. Can you see what I'm saying? Let's do something about it. Amen. As those who have gotten glimpses of eternity, of heaven, of the beauty of Jesus the Christ, Let's sing and celebrate it now with number 756. share our lives together through our prayer journeys. I would draw your attention to the back of your messenger insert, or again, for those of you online, you can download it for yourselves. And there you will see our updated and ongoing prayer list as of printing time on Friday. In addition to the items that you can read for yourself there, I want to encourage anyone who's joining us online that if you have a public prayer request, you can type it into the comments field of this video. If you have something more private, you can call, text, email, instant message me, and I will honor the confidentiality according to your requests. You can also swing past the church or call the office uh, for more public items, in addition to contacting your call to care representative. Finally, for those of you who are here in person, you of course know we have prayer cards out in the Welcome Center that you can put in the prayer box uh, if you want to share something Again, more confidential or uh, something that you're not prepared to lift up right now. With that, I have a couple of updates. Uh, sadly, loved ones, uh, for those of you who can read for yourselves, one of the dear friends and members of this congregation, Wilson Hawk, after a battle with declining health and uh, dementia over the last year, Wilson returned to the Lord on the 11th. Wilson Hawk returned to the Lord on the 11th. He's going to be having calling hours uh, on Tuesday at Carlo and Libby. Calling hours are on Tuesday at Carlo and Libby at 12 p.m. Uh, with a small service to follow. And Wilson is going to be interred at Sunset Hills Burial Park. You can see uh, that our dear friend and partner in ministry, uh, son-in-law of this congregation, Chris McBurney, 
after a years-long struggle with significant issues in his uh, shoulder, um, now has some complications with low uh, blood platelet levels. Uh, pretty severe, he actually was in ICU for a couple of days at Altman this week. He is now um, stabilizing at Cleveland Clinic, but all of the continuing shoulder surgeries are on hold until they can get his platelet count back up. Um, I was messaging with him this morning, and he's, he's back with it uh, and stable, but there's a long journey ahead, so please keep him and Sherry in your prayers. Uh, I want to acknowledge that we celebrated the homegoing of our brother Paul Sanko earlier in the week, and today's flowers on the communion table uh, come from the Sanko family, from Penny and the boys, uh, and they thank you all for your prayer, your care, and your supports. I've been asked to lift up uh, for you um, one of our young men in the church family, uh, Cameron Loudenschlager. Uh, Cameron is going to have to have surgery on his foot on Thursday. Uh, apparently he had uh, an extra bone in his foot that broke during one of his athletic endeavors and consequently did ligament and tendon damage. So he's gonna to have to have that extra bone that is broken removed, then they're gonna to have to reattach the ligaments and tendons. Difficult enough, right? When they were doing the pre-op testing, they come to find out that Cameron also suffers from an autoimmune disorder. Uh, he has low globulin levels. So this procedure is gonna happen on Thursday, but it's complicated having now found out that he has an autoimmune disorder, in the era of COVID, dad works for the oil companies, mom's a nurse, siblings in school in person. There's some challenges here for the Lautenschlager family. So please be praying for Doug and Helena as they try to take care of both their boys, most notably Cameron this week and the surgery he's gonna be having on Thursday. As I acknowledged COVID, I'm sure we all have any number of people in our lives, whether it's the workforce, our school environments, our own families, uh, who have suffered in a variety of ways from COVID, whether that's job loss or coming down with the illness themselves or being caretakers for someone. Uh, without getting into any specific situation, I know we're all mindful about it, but let's, let's continue to not just see the suffering of others, but do what we can to care for people who are hurting, to protect everybody's self, uh, safety and the sanctity of life, um, and, and know that there's probably a lot more going on behind the scenes than any of one of us is ever really aware of. So we ask that the God who transfigured Jesus would transfigure this situation throughout our globe and make it something that allows us to move forward in health and healing. Are there any other pressing joys or concerns for the congregation at this time? Seeing none, uh, I'd ask that you would remember that whenever two or more gather in the name of Jesus, he's present in the midst. The same Jesus who said that if we ask for anything in his name, he will grant it to us. The same Jesus who assures us that his spirit is at work before we can ever fully formulate a word of request on our own lips. Let us approach God knowing that the Lord has been listening, is active. Let us listen to and for God's voice even as we speak with the Holy One now. Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer God. We all see through a glass darkly, as St. Paul reminds us, partially, incompletely. But we are fortunate in the Christian tradition to have received a glimpse of the beauty and the glory that is ours through your Son, Jesus the Christ. May we rejoice in that. May we tell others about it, and may it transform our lives into agents of the kingdom on earth, the 
kingdom of heaven here and now. And we need your presence and that power because this world is not yet the perfection of the world to come. It is broken. It is a work in progress. And we are an under construction people. So grant us a new indwelling of your spirit. Give us creativity and discernment. Grant us energy and endurance. Give us passion and power. May we be filled with the kind of love that can destroy every barrier wall of hostility. May we always look forward to what you will yet do in this world and in the world to come. God, our hearts are heavy for those who have experienced loss, whether that is death, injury, financial, emotional. Our hearts are also full of care and concern for others. May that be translated into practical action. Gracious God, we want those who are struggling right now to sense your presence and to feel our prayers. We want to be able to reach out and hold the hands of those who are grieving. We want to be a people who see both your majesty and where it is lacking in our own lives, in society, in nature itself. So for people who are facing surgeries, for those who are uncertain about tomorrow's food, for those who have their eyes blinded by the lies of the enemy, for those who feel isolated and alone, we ask, oh God, that you would appear to them in a way that encourages them. We ask that if it is up to us, we might find ways to minister to them. And we ask that you would minister to us in our needs, that even when we don't know what or how to pray, still the way of Jesus is manifested in the flesh. Knowing that words fail us, we now entrust to you the rumblings in our guts, those things that are too deep for anything other than our internal groanings and sighs. Receive then, Lord, our personal, our private, our silent prayers and petitions. middle of winter, when the snow blankets the ground and the air is crisp and still, we're also able to hear the chirping of birds. If we peek just beneath the top layer of snow, already spring plants are beginning to bud and send shoots forward. So God, may that encourage us. May we be those who on this St. Valentine's Day remember that when we give of ourselves for others, we are honoring Christ and his self-sacrificial love. And that love will be made complete. May we look forward in optimistic realism toward what you yet want to reveal in humanity. May we always be working for the restoration of all of your children. And we do these things because Christ did it first for us. So now we renew our commitment to the will and way of our Lord and Savior, praying together the prayer he taught his own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. taking up our tithes and our offerings.
As those who have received the unveiled gospel, we bring our gifts. In thanks that we will not perish under your saving grace, we present our offerings. So take what we share and use it. We pray to unbind the minds of those who do not yet believe in you. Allow the light of the gospel and the glory of Christ to shine through the resources we contribute. In all of our living and giving, may we always only proclaim Jesus and not ourselves. Bless us with wisdom, too, we ask, so that we would be faithful and effective servants of our Lord in how we administrate these tithes. May your illumination shine out of the darkness through our stewardship. Let us and all of these things bring people the knowledge of your glory found in the face of our Savior. Amen. Beloved, let's look out into a world that sometimes doesn't look pretty, but let us see beyond the veil of darkness to the light of Christ that is coming into the world, and it's coming through us as well as the word that we can read and see for ourselves. So let's be a Nike people and just do it, walking in the way of Jesus. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the eternal presence of God Most High be with us all now and forevermore as we go in peace, loving and serving the Lord and one another. Amen. Amen.